trying to understand the inner specifics so that I can find effective healing remedies and revive hope into the spirit of my existence. It has been depleted for so long I forgot that I had one and no one will ever have to wait 12 years to gain their life back. When I do oxygen and my sympathetic is engaged and my sympathetic parts are fronting in the body, it feels nice. It feels like it brings clarity and stuff. It feels like it brings some balance to our thought processes and then ability to regulate and observe and whatnot. But with a parasympathetic state, Every single breath is a shock, as if the body's not getting any oxygen. Mm So when I access, when I use my language centers without the reliable, consistent, conscious access in my left brain hemisphere, the way that it does is I see the words in my mind and I pro pronounce them. And so, what was the word? Transpire. Mm -hmm. When I say a word like transpire, and I'm enun enunciating each letter in a very articulate, meticulous, explicit sort of manner, it's because the language is not coming in an automated fashion. And instead, I'm having to rally with my dissociative parts of consciousness and ask them to feed me visuals mm. of what the word would assemble to be like. And from there, I can um, guess about the pronunciation. And so that's why I say the word dissociative differently. When I'm more present, it's dissociative. You know, maybe that's not... I, I think it's the other present. way around. It, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, um, I thought it was present. Ah, <laughs> JK, well, 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 well. There's two different ways I say it, though. The so seative versus the so sative. I enunciate the I explicitly when I'm not fully conscious in my consciousness um, because I'm reading the word and pronouncing each letter, hoping that I say it correctly. Um, because if I say things the way they come out naturally with dissociative parts, I'm feeling the vibration of what I'm saying. I'm not hearing the words, and so little casual things get jumbled. Like the word arm comes out arn. <laughs> I can guess what it is based on the context, but the word's not very explicitly, clearly, concisely conveyed. And so 
reading the words within my mind is how I've been communicating through the dissociation for a very long time. Quick! That's true. I thought you might not like the sound of a pocket too. Um, in the same way that sitting down and tuning into left brain abilities of organization and language center application, um, physical world in a, in a very adultish manner, um, the same way that that agitates child parts of consciousness because it does not work with their neurobiology, in that same exact manner, a lot of the play therapies that we do can be very agitating for me because my natural state is to be disconnected from the body. And I like it that way. Um, but they need to be able to feel the body and interact with their environment in a nonverbal manner in order to be present. And that works with their neurobiology, but goes against mine. <clears throat> and it's things like that that show me the validity of this, um, this disorder. And, whoa, no, take two. I know, I was dissociating there. Um, um, yeah, I, I have been very fascinated by the science of dissociative identity disorder because the mental health industry is very much about subjective perceptions of external specifics. Um, and with that approach, the healing I was offered for eight years left me homeless, disabled, and chronically attempting suicide and just miserable in any, every manner of, of the, of, of the thing. <laughs> <laughs> And so I've been fascinated by the science of dissociative identity, sort of trying to understand the inner specifics so that I can find effective healing remedies and revive hope into the spirit of my existence. It has been depleted for so long, I forgot that I had one. Um, meeting it again has been really... Don't look at me, that messed me up! <laughs> I can't do eye contact, only child parts can. <laughs> okay, I won't do it again. <laughs> only watching the screen. <laughs> Thanks, <Bart. laughs> <laughs> all the things um so this for example <laughs> um there would have been a lot of judgment for this this little thing happening where i need to grab things around me and hold tight um but now that i've picked apart the neurobiology of my life experience through over a dozen states of consciousness within my dissociative identity <laughs> Last my spot. What? Picking apart the neuro neurobiology. Huh? Oh no, I picked the part. Yeah. Picked the part. Picked the part. Exactly. I picked the part. <laughs> I picked the part. I picked the part. <laughs> it's not gonna be a new phase. <laughs> Whoa! I just saw a cool thing. What was it? A dove. Mm. But little see everything in slow motion, and so watching it fly overhead. I see it in slow motion now that I have co-consciousness with them. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, this, this is because my vestibular system is not engaging and my consciousness is having a difficult time uh, engaging in the present moment in the, in the desired manner where I am a grown woman communicating to another grown woman for the intent of a specific outcome, purpose, present with the process sort of scenario lost it like half a sentence at a time as soon as i hit the comma that's what it is as soon as i hit the comma it's gone 
<laughs> They're like, punctuation! What do we do? Because <laughs> I associate the punctuation goes. And that's how I can tell when someone's like dissociated. When like I know someone and I know they, they live with chronic dissociation in a way that I do. When they have punctuation and they don't have punctuation when they're typing, I can tell they're, you know, less present, less within their verbal language centers in a conscious, conscious manner. Uh, yeah. I don't know if I... How are you doing? Hmm? How are you doing? Huh? How are you doing? What about yourself? Me? Yeah, you. I interview you at some point. <laughs> what did I tell you? What's your name? Uh, my name's Abby. And tell me more about what do you like to do? What makes you a unicorn? That's it. <laughs> <laughs> we went to go find the words, but because we don't have co consciousness right now, I look to the left, going into the left part of my consciousness through left brain hemispheric engagement, going to the left peripheral vision. Got a really bad headache after that. <laughs> That just happened because I remembered something. Mm. Um, but when I remember things, when I feel things, it's in my body, not my brain. Mm. Or not my mind, I should say. Yeah. Um, it's in my body, not my mind. Take you. <laughs> Boogie Bear, no, that's mine. No, oh, those people, quick hide. Quick hide. Oh God. Okay, Baba. Hey, my gosh. Oh, that made me nauseous. Mm -hmm. I need to do more oxygen. Okay, you want to go in? Let's do it. Say bye, world. No, I want the world to stay. Okay, the world can stay. Say hi, world. <laughs> Along Kristen's healing journey while experiencing chronic age regression, the number two was kind of a thematic occurrence. During intensive periods of age regression and unique neurobiological activity, Kristen could not access language centers in her left brain hemisphere. There were periods of time where Kristen could physically not speak except for the word to. In addition, Kristen age regressed to two years old for several years, adding to the deep meaning behind the number two along her healing journey. In this moment, she puts up the number two with her left hand as her right brain hemisphere expresses loving presence. Throwing up the number two was a way to communicate that she was here and she was okay but she couldn't get to her left brain and there were child aspects of consciousness present.
Ooh, Abby. Abby cannot directly talk about herself. Mm. Um, that's really fascinating. She can talk, but only in like a responsive way, not a mm -hmm. premeditated thought way. Yeah. I think that has to do with my theory about each aggression involving Broca's aphasia. Was it Ornick's aphasia? But that was protective parts. I don't know. Yeah, I think it's Broca's. Yeah, it was aphasia. The way we discovered that was because of how we say two when we're age regressed. And I was watching a crash course video. Mm -hmm. Shout out. They're amazing stuff. I, I love learning through them. They're, they're, what? Crash course video? I'm hungry. Hi. Hold everything. Let's admire the neurobiological miracle of an unconscious switch in this unicorder of adaptable consciousness condition, ACC, which you can discover more about in my implicit revelations case study at kristenwindsor.com slash known. This switch of consciousness happens so fluidly, so quickly, so miraculously, so automatically, and so wondrously. Kristen experiences a profound and instantaneous switch of consciousness as her neurobiology adjusts from an adult state of engagement emphasizing the left brain hemisphere and forebrain to a child state of engagement, especially deriving from the right brain hemisphere and hind brain. The way we discovered that was because of how we say two when we're age regressed. And I was watching a crash course video. Mm -hmm. Shout out. They're amazing stuff. I, I love learning through them. They're, they're, what? Crash Course video? I'm hungry. Hi. The brain is so miraculous. Did you see how quickly that happened? Amazing stuff. I, I love learning through them. They're, they're, what? Crash Course video? I'm hungry. Hi. You want to finish telling my friend? Huh? You want to finish telling my friend? I want to go to Ocean's Snack Shack. Okay. Because of how trauma responses were trapped in Kristen's body, she entered a dorsal vagal collapse where her body unconsciously relived implicit or unconscious memory fragments from original traumatic experiences during early childhood, all of those horrific sensations and their associated trauma responses throughout various nervous systems were automatically relived every time Kristen ate food. Ocean was the name of a child state of consciousness affiliated with some of the foundational trauma that disrupted her neurodevelopment and resulted in living with adaptable consciousness condition. As Kristen sculpted her own healing path, she created a series of rituals that helped eating be not so scary, and there were a myriad of things that happened around eating time to allow for the trauma responses to arise with minimal damage to parts of consciousness, basically. And part of that was creatively naming this Ocean's Snack Shack, a special place in Kristen's heart where space was created for her child parts of consciousness to come out and eat since they were affiliated with that activity in the nervous system and associated brain regions. I, I love learning through them. They're, they're, what? 
crash course video. I'm hungry. Okay. You want to finish telling me, friend? Huh? You want to finish telling me, friend? I will go to Ocean Snack Shack. Okay. Should we say the word? <laughs> snack attack at Ocean Snack Shack. Snack attack at Ocean Snack Shack. Yeah, snack attack at Ocean Snack Shack. Yeah, it's time for snacks at Ocean Snack Shack. On behalf of Ocean, I invite you to join a personalized experience dining at Ocean Snack Shack. In 2017, the state of consciousness known as Ocean was about two years old or maybe even younger. When these videos were filmed in 2019, she was approximately four to six years old. One year later, in 2020, that child state of consciousness was progressing through the stages of adolescence that she never got to experience because of how trauma halted her neurodevelopment. And so in 2020, even though the body was a grown adult, the child state of consciousness known as Ocean was experiencing the adolescence that she never got to be a part of because she had been stuck and frozen in time, trapped in the neural data associated with trauma. Once that implicit data was healed, she was free and gradually progressed through the stages of neurodevelopment that she never got to experience. One of her final acts as a child state of consciousness before growing up into the adult I am today was creating a healing journey experience called Delicious Magic Play Shop. And it is a priceless once in a lifetime opportunity to cultivate your healing journey in a profoundly transformative fashion. From igniting self-love to practicing mindfulness, this delicious magic play shop allows you to cook healthy food in a way that feeds your body, mind, and spirit. Explore more healing journey magic at kristenwindsor.com slash healing videos. Delicious magic and playful adventures await you. Snack a lackin. Does that mean he's snacking or lacking snacks to snack? Snack a lackin. Does that mean he's snacking or lacking snacks to snack? P.S. Discover more about Kristen's unique experiences with creating comedy bits when she discusses various styles of dissociation in thesis number 27 of her Implicit Revelations case study. Exploratory adventures await at kristenwindsor.com slash known. You want to finish telling me, friend? I will go to Ocean Snack Shack. Okay. Should we show the world how you get to Ocean Snack Shack? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what was I saying before? You were talking about the Crash Course video and why you said Whoa! Snack. Yeah. Basically, you're talking about why you say two when you're age regressed. Whoa! Forgot about that? That was so long ago. <laughs> three minutes and 28 seconds ago. <laughs> no, it was 3,000 years ago. Mm -hmm. Back with the dinosaurs. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? It's also miraculous. It had been less than one minute, but because of the switch of consciousness, Kristen had zero conscious memory of what she was just talking about. When she was reminded about what she was talking about, it kind of came back and it felt like it was a million years ago. It felt like it was 3,000 years ago as she described it, even though it was literally less than one minute ago that she was talking about that. 
because the switch of consciousness had wiped clean her short-term working memory. And so the instinctive neurobiological capacity to recollect what was being discussed 60 seconds prior wasn't accessible in a traditional fashion. And when reminded about what was happening a minute ago, it felt like a memory from a very, 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 very long time ago. So miraculously fascinating. The way we discovered that was because of how we say two when we're age regressed. And I was watching a crash course video. Mm -hmm. Shout out. They're amazing stuff. I, I love learning through them. They're, they're, what? Crash course video? I'm hungry. Okay. You wanna finish telling me, friend? Huh? You wanna finish telling me, friend? I will go to Ocean Snack Shack. Okay. Should we show the world how you get to Ocean Snack Shack? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what was I saying before? You were talking about the crash course video on why you say Whoa! Show. Yeah. Basically, you're talking about why you say two when you're age regressed. Whoa! Forgot about that? That was so long ago. <laughs> Three minutes and 28 seconds ago. <laughs> No, it was 3,000 years ago. Mm -hmm. Back with the dinosaurs. <laughs> yeah, I know why. If dissociative switches occurred every 5 to 30 seconds, and every single switch completely reset the brain's working memory and how memories were being accessed to navigate the moment and stored as new moments were processed into neural data, then a three-minute experience could potentially feel like six completely different encounters, each with a completely separate or independent orientation in time and space according to how automated neurobiological activity was engaging with unfolding realities. So miraculous, astounding, and beautifully divine. No matter who we are, what we're going through, the brain is a miracle, consciousness is a miracle, and the human experience is a miracle. No, it was 3,000 years ago. Mm -hmm. Back with the dinosaurs. <laughs> yeah, I know why. Oh, I need this on. <laughs> <laughs> it stimulates, helps stimulate my language centers. Uh, Crash course video. Two, right. Yeah. Um, Crash Course video. And um, he was talking about a situation where a man had a stroke and it caused broke his aphasia. And in that experience, he lost the ability to communicate with the exception of saying the word two. The only word he could physically say after having this stroke was the word two. It's important to note that this adult state of consciousness was not able to continue speaking because she specifically remembered the moment prior where she was expressing this idea. Instead, her brain was able to get to the original thought forms of wanting to share this idea. Very unique access to memories to navigate unfolding moments. Oh, I need this on. <laughs> it stimulates, helps stimulate my language centers. Uh, Crash course video. Two, right. Yeah. Um, Crash course video. And um, he was talking about a situation where a man had a stroke. And it caused broke his aphasia. And in that experience, he lost the ability to communicate with the exception of saying the word two. The only word he could physically say after having this stroke was the word two. 
Am I severely age regressed child states of consciousness within my dissociative identity were experiencing that? And I found that, I mean, my, my jaw just like dropped, <laughs> like super massive, whoa. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, we've just, piecing together the science of my experience has given me validity in my experiences has given me an outlet to understanding and describing, like putting language mm -hmm. to that experience um, for processing sake, for, for expression of the validity of its sake. Yeah. I know. There's so many. I'm distracted. It's a lot of me. Yeah. There's that many in our brain. Let's just see. It's like, yeah. whoa. Yeah. Uh, what was I saying? Uh, question for Felicity. When, um, when that's happening, what's your awareness of it like? If that makes sense. Like, what are you experiencing when you can only say two? If you're experiencing anything. Originally, nothing. Yeah. Because... Without the language center, the ability for internal narration is mm -hmm. also gone. Mm -hmm. And I can only describe that experience now that I have language centers and the awareness of losing them. Yeah. Before, it was one or the other with complete amnesia between the experiences. Mm -hmm. um, and so before there was... There was no description of the experience. There was no ex experience yeah. um, of it. No, There was no conscious experience of it. I should say that. There was no conscious experience of it because to have a conscious experience of it, you have to have the ability for your conscious awareness. Mm -hmm. And that's gone in those, in those dissociative states. You have parts of the brain that create that neurobiological capacity to to possess and exert the gift of sanity are completely inaccessible in a very physical manner in those dissociative states of consciousness that are occurring 100 percent beyond all conscious awareness and control it's occurring completely within the unconscious even the subconscious is just kind of being activated consequentially between things it's not it doesn't have a mind of its own in the way that i was um first like taught to understand parts you know when i was first introduced to the concept of having parts it was expressed that everything they did was very consciously done mm -hmm. like everything they did was intentional and that caused so much harm because i'm just like all right so now you're telling me that what i thought was wrong wasn't wrong all of these years and instead what's wrong is there's these other people living in my brain doing things that intentionally destroy me like are you are you serious right now and there's nothing you can like do about this like are you kidding me and that was like the hope i was left with two years ago um and so there's been a lot of liberation in creating my five layers of human consciousness creating life experience model of, of explaining what consciousness is how it operates how it's created, how it interacts with one another, how it impacts the experience out here, where our power is within it, what's automated, how can we influence it, all of it. Um, exploring the, the five layers of consciousness has helped me understand what's happening and differentiate the unconscious neurobiology of my experience from the subconscious parts of consciousness within my dissociative mm -hmm. identity from what I actually have moment to moment conscious awareness, control, and power of. And that's given me a lot of freedom and power and um, truly just liberation, like more than anything, just liberation from my own self-judgment, from the hopelessness of my situation, from the fear of never, you know, getting uh, to a better place. Um, and so to be able to find this validity for my parts and myself, a lot of things kind of benefit subconscious or conscious awareness but to find this thing where we get to explain all of it together and, and how to work with one another you know the the unconscious body suffers from trauma my subconscious mind has dissociative parts on uh, my conscious awareness 
lives with dissociative amnesia and like, you know, just kind of having this, this grasp of, of distinction between the experiences can help me know that when I'm switching out, when, when parts are experiencing these things, it's happening completely beyond their conscious control. Um, because I understand how their aspects of consciousness work in a neurobiological fa manner and a psychological manner. And through personal interaction and experience, applying that knowledge now in a personal manner. And mm -hmm. so with that reach into my consciousness, I can be a leader and I can be there for my parts. When before it was, they had to be there for me because there was never an opportunity to do anything other than just survive. And we have successfully created that opportunity for ourselves in the past year, especially. Um, but we, we've been, you know, we've been fighting for this for years. We've been in and out of, of mental health treatment for like eight plus years. Um, I first went to therapy 12 years ago. And I first started looking into it of my own accord eight years ago. My mm -hmm. first semester of college, I wrote a 15 page research paper about major depressive disorder, uh, which is my diagnosis at the time. And then in 2014, it changed to bipolar and PTSD. And, and then it, over the years, they looked at all sorts of other things. They were like, well, you know, is it, is it, a, you know, schizoaffective? Is it, uh, major depressive with psychotic features and bipolar with psychotic features was like what they were entertaining for, for a majority of the time, I think. Um, and then in 2017, so two years ago, two years ago, 12 years after first going to therapy, uh, during dissociative episodes, um, I got a diagnosis and my hope is that when people are experiencing what I was experiencing, there will be awareness and tools freely and publicly accessible. And no one will ever have to wait 12 years to gain their life back. And after completing a vocalized expression of ideas, both of Kristen's hands throw up the number two as her child parts of consciousness return to the scene.